What does micro bourbon two cobblers have to do with going to college? Let's find out. Hey ladies and gents and welcome back. So today we're just going to do something a little different. It's going to be more laid back and just kind of conversational with Heath and I where we talk about trades. You know, obviously we're shoe cobblers and you know, this is a, a business we've been in for a while. So we just kind of want to talk about things and throw this out there. Life's lessons with Trenton and Heath. Exactly. So let me tell you what even brought up this conversation. Uh, a couple of months ago, I was on my Instagram feed one morning and I was scrolling through and I saw an advertisement from Wolverine Boots. Now Wolverine had partnered up with Mike Rowe uh, from Dirty Jobs and he has a foundation called Mike Rowe Works Foundation. And um, they contribute money to the trades jobs and have scholarships and whatnot. Well, anyway, so I saw this pair of boots and they had teamed up with not only Micro Works, but uh, was it Pappy Van Winkle? Pappy Van Winkle from the Buffalo Trace Distillery. Yeah, bourbon. bourbon. And it was a really cool coll collaboration and I'll tell more about the cool boot later. Uh, it's a really interesting story. But anyways, before we talk about that, I want to talk about today's video sponsor, which is Skillshare. So Heath and I found out about Skillshare several months ago through other YouTube channels that we watch. Uh, it sounded like a really great idea, and because we are both entrepreneurs and business owners, a lot of the courses that I heard about through Skillshare, uh, it piqued my interest. And I wasn't really even sure what kind of what topics they were going to cover until I actually got on there and you just start going, and it's just oh, a plethora of classes. Uh, yeah, anything I mean, they, and everything is covered in this. They literally have thousands of courses. Everything from business courses to uh, motivation courses to art to design to Adobe. I mean, you computer if you the computer stuff. stuff. Cool thing is they actually break it down into when you search, you can filter like beginner level, intermediate, advanced, and yeah. So you can, you basically tailor this according to what you're looking for. And also the beautiful part about Skillshare is that it's not like you're taking courses by a professor. Uh, you're taking courses by someone that's actually an expert in that field. Out so, in the trenches every day, learning and honing their skills. Yep. So one of the classes that I took recently was called Entrepreneurship Hustle from Business Plan to Real Success. And it was taught by a gentleman named Michael Chernow. Uh, he's a restaurateur up in New York City. And he taught about everything from having a great business plan to choosing the right location to how to decorate your your shop so that it is appealing to customers so much interesting and knowledgeable information that we were able to use in a lot of our daily uh, applications as well on our businesses so the cool thing here is that skillshare has been kind enough to say that the first thousand people to click in the link below they're going to get a free trial membership premium membership and then after that, it's only $10, $10 a month. month. So if you really compare it, guys, I mean, when you look at what a course costs anywhere else, it's hundreds of dollars. But, you know, for 10 bucks a month, you're able to take as many courses as you want. In the comfort at, of your own home. Comfort of your own home at your own pace. Definitely worth something checking out. So at the end of this video, make sure you check out that link and be one of the first 1,000 to get a free trial membership. That's what kind of started it. And I was like, you know what? We need to do a video and just talk about trades and trades jobs. Because we get a lot of questions from guys who are either one, one in the trades and they're just, you know, give us their opinion on how they got into it. But we also get a lot of guys who are in the corporate world and, you know, talk about, hey, well, I had interest in trades. And so we, we get a lot of feedback from people about this topic. And so we just thought we'd make a good video about it. So I guess one of the big things if you if you talk about trades and the lack thereof because there seems to be a big deficit in this country when it comes to trades and there's a stigma that kind of goes along with trades mm -hmm. and you, you really have to go back to where it all starts and that's in the schools now mm -hmm. I, I used to be a school teacher I taught middle school and high school in the metro Nashville area and one of the things that I used to recognize was that some of the you know higher ups were kind of pushing, the teachers to then funnel these students down this one-way road called four-year U, and um, everybody, whether they had any interest in going to college, they were like, you need to find out, ask them, where do they want to go to college, and yeah. and um, what, are, what are the steps that they're taking to get to, to, to a four-year university? And you said a lot of those kids 
weren't even on the 12th grade level. Yeah. They, some of those guys were down like 8th graders. That I had a 12th grader who was reading pretty much on like a 6th grade level. Mm -hmm. and, and they approached you and, and said that you need to get that kid basically where he is going to pass that year so that he can basically has a chance to go to college. Well, yeah, it was just, it was just, it was college week is what yeah. we used to call it. And um, they wanted me to f sit down with him and find out where he was going to go, planning on applying to college. And you know what I did realize about this kid, and it has nothing to do exactly with his reading level, but it also just goes along with his interests. His interests were actually in automotive. Mm -hmm. um, now that's not saying, well, if you're in automotive, then you must be you know, reading on a sixth grade level. No, no, not at all. I mean, there's some, there's some very brilliant minds in the trades, but his mind was interested in that. Yeah. So why, why would I want to not encourage that kid to say, yeah, keep working on your reading, but follow your passion? Yeah. And yeah, it's the same thing. Um, I live in a suburb uh, in South Nashville. Uh, it's more of a affluent neighborhood or, or uh, suburb. And I've, I've kind of, my kids are a little younger. They're in middle school, elementary school, but I've listened to parents talking and I've watched a lot of, you know, junior seniors, you know, not only in my neighborhood, but around, around town. And the one thing you'll always hear is where are you going to go to college? You know, what schools have you heard back from? And, and not once do I ever hear, you know, what do you want to, what do you want to do with your life? You know, you're getting ready to graduate. What do you want to do? I, I never hear that question. It's always where are you going to go to college? And I, and I hate hearing that, you know, like Keith, said earlier and, and forgot to mention, we did a video talking about, you know, our story last year and I'll put the link to our story down below. So definitely check it out. We go into much more depth, but in case you didn't mention earlier, you know, Heath has a master's degree, bachelor's degree, and I have a bachelor's degree too. So we've both been to college, but now we've also been in trade. So we we're saw able, both sides. Yeah. We've been able to see both sides. So I feel like we, we may not know a lot about trade schools and all that sort of thing, but, but I feel like we've seen both sides. So we're able to have this conversation today. But one of the things that we talked about too is the lack of, uh, what was it, vocational classes oh, yeah. or whatever in, in high school. So there was a school in, in Nashville and actually I did my student teaching um, part of it at this school called McGavick High School. Now McGavick was known throughout the state and probably even like the Southeast uh, for its vocation. Mm -hmm. And this is a giant, giant school. It's got like- Very big school one main principal and like four assistant principals underneath it. So it's really big. And um, it was it was just known. It was in a it was a very, I guess you would call it um, working class neighborhood mm -hmm. historically. And when I walked through the school, there used to be these giant wings um, with these big, big classrooms that used to have all kinds of what, uh, like woodwork and even automotive. like automotive, refrigerator. I mean, there was just all kinds of stuff, all kinds of trades that, you know, your parents and probably, we even had some some trades offered in schools when we were younger, but it, they kind of started fading out when we were in school. Um, but now it's just, those big old classrooms are just filled with dusty boxes and old old desk and yeah. everything. It was yeah. just, they've killed it. It's, it's sad, sad. it's sad. and and I. You don't. You just don't hear of vocational classes anymore. Nope. Again, I think it's such a disservice to young kids because I think there's a lot of kids out there that they don't want to go to college, but they feel pressure to go to mm -hmm. college. And I hear Society. it all the time. They may not be saying it. Yeah, they may not be saying it to you, the parents, uh, or for you younger kids that are watching. You know, you don't want to talk, tell your parents that, hey, mom, dad, I don't want to go to college because, you know they want you to go. And I get it. You know, parents always want the best for their kids, but I want everybody to know that there's also other options out there. And, you know, there's so many great trades out there. I mean, you know, uh, I mean, God, dental hygienist, I didn't even realize that was a trade, but I mean, I was looking the other day at how much those folks can make you know, after several years, and it's pretty impressive money. Auto mechanics. There's specific you know? specific yeah. schools that you can go to, yeah. you know, and it's not a four-year. So when we say college, and when I'm talking about college in this aspect, I'm talking about like, you know, four-year universities, but not necessarily college because there's mm -hmm. automotive colleges mm -hmm. and everything. So hey, think about what you want and and find out what it needs you need to do to, to you know, not go down that four-year U, but 
what other colleges can I go to or what other trade schools can I go to? Um, what, what apprenticeships can I sign up for? Yeah. Volunteering, volunteer with a tradesman. Yeah. And it's a great way to get your foot in the door. You can test the waters to see if you're interested in it or if you've got a, you know, kind of an aptitude for it. Mm -hmm. And then if you like it, a lot of times the volunteering on your free time will lead to, you know, paid employment uh, if you're good enough. Yeah. I mean, yeah, there's so many different things you can do now that we're kind of transitioning over to uh, where you need to go to get these trade skills. Yeah. Um, like he said, you know, I wish that high schools would bring back vocational classes where you can kind of dip your toe in things. And then, you know, from there, like you said, you know, you have trade schools, but you also, in, in our case, um, you know, we didn't come from shoe cobbler backgrounds. Nope. At all. I've never touched a shoe. I like shoes. I was a connoisseur of shoes like a lot of you guys, uh, so to speak. Um, but I didn't know anything about shoes. And it's one of those things you actually just started taking classes, not classes, but you started watching YouTube videos yeah. and talking to people, right? Yeah. I uh, started, you know, emailing people, trying to get tips, reading. I read as much as I could online. Um, and then I started tinkering around with making um, making handmade shoes for fun, just yeah. for fun, just to see if I liked it. And then I, I liked it. So yeah. I kept doing bit, you know, buying more and buying more leathers and more tools. And, and that ultimately led to this. So, mm -hmm. and then, uh, and then when we finally got into this business, everyone asked, you know, they think that we came from cobbler backgrounds, but yeah. we got into this business and you knew a lot about shoes, but as far as actually repairing shoes, we didn't know a lot about the machinery. Yeah, you know, so because we did, th I did things by hand. Yeah, we did it. Yeah, you did it by hand. So we didn't know a lot about machinery. So we, when I say we, it wasn't really an apprenticeship, but one of the gentlemen that we were purchased the cobbler shop from, you know, he showed us how to do some things. And then there was a guy, not in the newspaper. I know newspapers so old fashioned. I think it was on Craigslist, believe it or not. Back in the day when we first started, I uh, saw an ad on Craigslist, and there was a man who was a former shoe cobbler for like 30 years. He had moved down here from New Jersey and he was getting rid of a lot of his uh, machinery. And we were looking for some things. So I actually reached out to the guy and I said, uh, would you mind stopping by our shop and let's just talk for a little while. So he came by the shop and we spoke and we actually paid him to come work at our shop for a month or so and he taught us help hone our skills. Yeah, he taught us more than whew, than we ever knew about shoe. He was originally from Portugal. Yeah, he was a Portuguese gentleman, and um, he's the one that really taught us a lot of the things that we didn't know. And now, you know, it's the little things that he he taught that I think kind of helped hone our skills. So that's just kind of an example of where it's it's kind of like an learning from a master yeah just go into a, if you know if you want to be a shoe cobbler or if you want to be an auto mechanic or if you want to do i don't know whatever it is you there's so many jobs out there maybe you just want to dip your toe in it and see if you're interested volunteer you know like yeah. you said just volunteer and say hey you know if, if guys came up to us and said hey i really am interested in being a shoe cobbler someday do you mind if i just swing by your shop a couple of days out of the week and just hang out and watch you do things man that'd be cool absolutely you know and I, maybe I'll teach some things along the way. So I definitely think there's avenues out there to try things before you just go full force mm -hmm. at it. You know, one of the things that I can't stand is when I hear kids are told this all the time by society or by their parents is that you can't be successful if you go into a trade. Yeah. Or if you don't go to college, you're not going to make it in life. Yeah. Like if you don't work hard, you're going to wind up like that guy. <laughs> yeah. Like that guy probably makes more than your parents combined. Yeah, and the, yeah, and, and you hear that a lot, and I, I agree. I think it's such a disservice to tell kids that because there's so many. Well, let me put it to you this way, and I'm sure a lot of you guys out there know as well. Just because you go to college does not make you an automatic success story. I know plenty of people that went to college, spent tens of thousands of dollars on a degree, got a degree. They're 20 years out from school or graduating, and they're still not uber successful. And they hate their life. Yeah, and they're miserable because I have a lot of my friends come up to me all the time and say, man, I wish I could do what you guys are doing. And I'm, I, I work on shoes for a living. So kind of put that into perspective. Yeah. So again, you know, just because you go into a trade doesn't make you successful. 
What it boils down to is whether you go and you want to be an auto mechanic or whether you want to be a dental hygienist or whether you want to be a plumber or whether you want to go to business school or you want to be in marketing, you have to be the best at what you do and you have to try hard and you have to hone your skill and, and it just goes, there's so much boils down into how hard you want to work. Follow your passion, but also make sure that that passion has a market. Yes, and I think that's a big part of it. Yeah. You know, a lot of people looked at us and they think, well, I think people have come up to us a lot, more so when we first started this business, and I heard it all the time in our last shop. Uh, are you guys able to make a living doing this? You know, are y'all, are you guys doing okay? One, it's insulting. <laughs> Quite I've, insulting. I, I, can, I just can't imagine like going up to somebody and asking them about their career or about I that. I'm I like, the things that come out of some people's mouths whatever. shock me. But think before you speak. Yeah. But I mean, yeah, yes, believe it or not, we have. But you know what? Again, let's let's look at that real quick. You know, cobbler shops over the past 20 years have been a dying breed. They're they're going out of business. But you have to catch up with the 21st century. And what does that mean? That means everything is going online. Diversify. Diversify. So if we had stayed in our little shop and we never went on YouTube and we never made a website, yeah, we, we might have gone out of business, even though we were in a busy part of Nashville. Instead, we said, you know what? Let's go on. Let's make a YouTube channel. Let's broaden our horizons. Let's tell everybody in the world about our business. And let's become really good at what we do and make it first class and we'll grow. And by golly, you guys have helped us grow and our business has exploded, uh, not only Potter and Sons, but our other business, Southern Polish. So it just goes to show you that two lowly shoe cobblers like Heath and I can actually be successful in a trade. And um, It's with anything in life. Anything. Just find out what you're passionate about, make sure that there's a market, and say, how can I take that, learn it, and then take it to the next step? How can I outdo you know the guy down the street who's doing the same yeah. thing? And then how can I make it more successful? So. Hone your skills, and uh, yeah, hopefully successful follow if you work hard. Yep. So I hope that helps out. Like I said, this this video was more so as we just really wanted to talk to you guys about uh, you know the trades field. A vent session. Yeah. Because <laughs> we, we 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 vent to each other about things like this all the time, and we're like, we got to get it in a video yeah. and get it out. Yeah. And like I said, yeah, we're just kind of tired of hearing, you know, people over the years put down trades and stuff like that. I'm just tired of it. And I think it needs to change. They are the backbone of this country. Yeah. And uh, so outside of that, let me get to the boot real quick. Uh, again, this was a really cool collaboration between Wolverine and uh, Pappy Van Winkle Bourbon and Micro Works Foundation. Uh, what was really cool about this pair of Thousand Miles is the leather they chose was a bourbon color. Uh, it's a really cool match and, and very distinct and unique. That's why they went with that color. Uh, they have the little medallion here on the side that has the Van Winkle uh, logo. And then it also has the Wolverine Thousand Mile logo as well. Um, it has the, up here on the tongue, it has the old Van uh, old Rip Van Winkle distillery patch and it is hand numbered. This one is number 134. I don't know how many they made. But yeah. all I know is by the time that Trent and I actually got around to ordering this, because they were, they were like a small batch selected, you know, collector's edition, they were gone in no time. <laughs> yeah. So what they had two sizes left. There were only two sizes left. It may have been two boots left. They had Who one, knows? a one and a seven, and one and a seven and a half. We don't wear either of those sizes, but by golly, I knew I wanted to get a pair of these. Yeah. So, so we got it. There was the money one, went to a good cause. It went to a great cause. Um, and also, like you can see, they've got the Wolverine Thousand Mile written in gold up here. And then back here on the back, it has the Van Winkle logo again in gold. And this is probably the coolest part of the entire boot. Instead of stacked leather on the heel blocks, they actually used... Uh, part of the bourbon the barrel. Bourbon barrel, the wood from the uh, bourbon barrel that made the uh, Pappy Van Winkle bourbon. And on the inside, you can actually see some of the char uh, from from that. So that's probably the coolest part of the whole boot. I love it. And again, like he said, it went to a great cause. All of that money, all of the proceeds from that one collaboration went to the Mike Rowe Works Foundation, Check which provides money to uh, young kids wanting to go into a trade and it provides scholarship money. So I will put the link to those guys as well down there. Definitely go check them out. If you know great. some young guy who's thinking about possibly getting into the trades, you're not sure what to do with his life. Yeah. Um, be encouraging. Yeah, Have be him encouraging. take a look at it. Maybe he can Send get the some link scholarship to him. money. Yeah. But again, also, last thing, 
again, go check out Skillshare. Uh, the first thousand people to click on that link below will get a free trial uh, membership to their premium uh, their premium membership. Uh, thousands and thousands of courses you can take at 10 bucks a month. That's so a good deal. It's a steal. Definitely go check it out. Okay, guys, I hope you enjoyed it. I thank you for putting up with us and just less listening to us vent and rant, and hopefully this helps out. Give us a thumbs up. Um, I know we, we ask that sometimes. It does help with the algorithm, and we are trying to get this video out to as many young men and yeah, women um, who might be interested in doing something different with their life than what they've probably been told. Yep. So uh, yeah, until next time, y'all have a good one.